In this example, we're going to look at how to use the chi-squared distribution to test the goodness of fit of the Poisson distribution. This is the second example of the Poisson distribution where the data is presented in a different way. Let's have a look at the example. A growing online estate agent records the number of houses sold each day for a period of six weeks. Their sale figures were as follows. The company claimed that they sell a constant average rate of six houses per day more than any other local estate agent and wish to claim this on their advertising campaign. Test at the 5% significance level where the PO6 provides an adequate model for the data. It does specify that it wants me to use the Poisson distribution where it says where the PO6 provides an adequate model but the fact that they've used the terminology a constant average of six houses per day is my other clue. When we're looking at doing a hypothesis test, we should look at seven steps that are available. The first one is that we need to have our hypotheses. The second one and third are we need to know if it's one or two tailed and the significance level. The fourth step is calculating the critical value. Then for our test statistic, we need our expected values first. And then we compare the test statistic with our critical value and make a conclusion based on that comparison. Let's start by looking at our hypotheses. So in this question, we are looking for a Poisson distribution. So putting that into context, we will say that our H0 is that a Poisson distribution of PO6 is a suitable model for the number of houses sold per day by the estate agent. Our H1 is therefore the opposite of that, and that is that the Poisson distribution is not a suitable model for the number of houses sold per day by the estate agent. Then we need to look at if it's one or two tailed and the significance level. Using the chi-squared test, it is always one tailed and we use the upper 0.95 percentage point. And in the question, it is stated that this is a 5% significance level. The next step is to look at the critical value. So unlike previous questions that we have looked at, uh, we don't have our data drawn in a frequency table. And while we can work it out without a frequency table, it does make our life much more difficult. So the first thing I'm going to do in this question is just rearrange the data into a more manageable um, table. So looking at the information I've been given about the number of houses sold per day, I can see that the fewest number of houses sold per day is zero. I've got quite a few of those. And the biggest number of houses sold on one single day is nine. So I'm going to draw my frequency table to include that information from zero to nine. And then just by doing a quick calculation, adding up what I've got, I can see that I've got seven zeros. I've got one number one. I've got three number twos, two number threes, six number fours, seven number fives, five number sixes, three number sevens, four number eights, and four number nines. So I've just put that into a quick frequency table. Now I've got that information in my table, I can look at my critical value. So I can see that there are 10 possible values of x from 0 to 9. So that's my n. So to work out my degrees of freedom, I'm going to do n minus 1, which is 9. Looking at the percentage points of the chi-squared distribution, so I'm just going to get out my... Uh, statistical tables and look up table 6. If I go across 9 degrees of freedom and come down the top 5%, so 0 0.95, I can see that crossover is on 16.919 and that is my critical value at the moment. Step number 5 is in part of cal calculating the test statistic, I first will need my expected values. To work out my expected values, I'm going to need to work out some probabilities first of all. I'm using a Poisson distribution. So using my Casio Classes calculator, I have a Poisson PD option on distributions, which is option number 7. And I want to know the exact value for 0, 1, 2, 3, etc. So putting that information into my calculator using a lambda of 6, I get 0 0.0024. 0 0.0148, 0 0.0446, 0 0.0892, 0 0.1338, 0 0.1606, 0 0.1606, 0 0.1376, and 0 0.1032. When I get to the last category, we need to think a little bit logically about the question here. The most number of houses sold in one day was nine. That is not the maximum you can sell. There are obviously a lot more that we could sell, 
they just haven't done so in the last six weeks. So we need to change this last category rather than 9 to greater than or equal to 9. So when we're putting this in our calculator, we need to be using the CD function or we need to be using the tables. And um, we get a probability of 0 0.1528. If you are using the CD function on your calculator, remember the calculator is calculating less than or equal to. So if you work out less than or equal to 8, and then 1 minus the answer, you should get 0 0.1528. Now for my expected frequency, I need to multiply the probability by the total frequencies. So looking at the values, I can see there are 42 days in which the number of houses sold was recorded. So I'm going to multiply each probability by 42 to get my expected value. In. And here I have my 10 expected values. Big warning here, if I look at my expected values, we know my expected values must be 5 or more. And I can see that for the whole of the first four categories, they are less than 5. And I've also got a sneaky little 4.3344 in at 8 sales. So I need to make some sensible combinations here as to how I'm going to rearrange my table now. I could combine 7 with 8. And I could combine 8 with 9, either of which are acceptable. I'm going to combine 8 with 9 to make an 8 and over category. Please don't fall into the trap of combining all of those together and having a 0, 1, 2, 3 and 8 group, because that doesn't make any sense. So just for neatness, I'm just going to rewrite that table with a zero, a three and under category and an eight and over category. So combining the top four probabilities, combining the bottom two probabilities, <coughs> excuse me, and then combining the top four expecteds and the bottom two expecteds. Now I've got some lovely expected values, uh, all greater than five I can move on, but we must be careful here again, because I've shrunk my number of X options I have now also shrunk my critical value. So instead of having 10 categories, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, I've now only got 6 categories, less than or equal to 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and greater than or equal to 8. So my new degrees of freedom is 5, 0 0.95 stays the same, and my critical value has reduced to 11.070. Now I can work out my test statistic. So using the formula O minus E all squared over E. Remember I've combined the first four categories together. So I need to count out how many zeros, ones, twos and threes all together I have, which is 13. <coughs> minus my expected value. So I was only expecting six and I had 13. So we've got quite a big contribution to the test statistic here. Then how many 4s did I have? I had 6 and I was expecting just over 5, so that's quite a small contribution. Uh, I, was, I had 7 and I was expecting just under 7, so again a small contribution. I had 5 and I got just under 7, so a small contribution. Uh, number 7s, I had 3 and I was expecting just under 6, so it's slightly creeping up. And then for the last one, 8 or over, if I combine how many 8s and 9s I had, that gives me a total observed value of 8, with an expected of just under 11, and again, quite a small contribution. For my test statistic, if I add up all those contributions, I end up with 9.5095. So, I now need to compare that test statistic with the critical value. If I draw myself a little chi-squared diagram, and I mark on my critical value of 11.070, anything to the left of that in the belly is going to be reject H0, and anything to the right of that in the tail is going to be, sorry, let me say that again, anything to the left of that 11.070 in the belly is accept H0, and anything to the right of that is reject H0 in the tail. So if I put my 9.5095 in there, we can clearly see it's in the belly. And therefore, we can do our conclusion, which is we accept H0. And therefore, there is no significant evidence to suggest that the Poisson distribution of Po6 is a suitable model. Let me say that again. I feel like I've said that wrong. There is significant evidence to suggest that the Poisson distribution Po6 is a suitable model for the number of houses sold per day.